Bing bong. Hello? Hello. Hey, you sound awesome again. Cool. Great. Fantastic. Uh, time's out perfectly, too, because the game just got underway. Let's just get the overlay set up quick. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. This is the Norwegian Star League Finals. We'll talk a little bit about the map pool and all these other things in a moment. Quick little note here in the lower left, you see the score displayed at all times throughout this series. It's a best of seven. There's $833 for first place, $450 for second. It doesn't matter really who loses today. They walk away with a lot of money. But let's be honest, one person is going to be champion. We'll see who they are. Spawning, though, in the top left corner of the map for the Team Liquid, it's going to be the Red Zerg player, Snoot. And in the bottom right, as the Blue Zerg player, it is Targa. With a picture of... Is it Hearthstone? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll get the funnies out of the way. We're not going to address it too much during the cast. His clan tag stands for ass to mouth. He's uh, got a picture of Hearthstone. I can only connect the dots there. I don't know. But uh, Targa's always been a bit of a funny guy. And uh, it's unfortunate he doesn't have a legit team right now. He is going for an earlier pool, actually, something worth noting, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a 10 pool, not like... I'm pretty sure this wasn't an 8 pool, right? I was uh, looking, I was looking at the uh, beautiful picture of Hearthstone. Right? Yeah, so was I. It feels awful early. Well, I was going to explain real quick, guys, before the action kicks off here, we'll see how much he dedicates to this, because uh, if this... Uh, Sorry, that's my bad for not paying attention here in the first cast of the day. But if this is a 10 pool, this is actually something you could play <laughs> off of and not actually all in and lose the game with. But um, the key thing I wanted to discuss is Ohana, Daybreak, Akalon Waste, Whirlwind. These are all really old school maps that you guys probably haven't heard of or even seen in God knows how long. That's because the Norwegian Star League, we cast it back in 2013. But for some reason, and I, it's unknown to me, the, f the finals were delayed for so long. And I'm talking like seven six months or whatever so we've got this really old school map pool because they're still using the same map pool from when this was played in like you know live but uh this match is live there's no replays going on or anything like that it's just this is finally finishing up here in like february of 2014. now uh there's a lot of links coming across the map and target is continuing to invest in them Let's see how much damage snoot takes from this he saw this coming <laughs> hmm. yeah that overlord always sees the uh the links coming out maybe not in the case of a six pool but definitely for a anything later than that and there's not really much you know you already have your build going so pretty much it's just make sure to make lings and not drones and have that queen out now target is going to go ahead and focus down this hatch you can go into the main and try and get drone kills but he sees the timing and knows well he already has lings probably out because that was pool first uh so the hatch does get canceled that does um that's you know it's still a nice pick off for targa something that temple worked out for him and he's actually gonna be able to have a slightly faster hatch uh, and gets a good scout as well. Yeah, and he's drawn up behind this. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Like, when you go for these quote-unquote more economic pools... Oh, he actually picks up a link over there. Uh, the key thing about it is, like, you know, you get your production up, which helps you make up that drone difference quicker later on. But Targa didn't... I mean, the hatchery kill was nice. Or not kill, but, like, cancel was nice. But Snoot retained his workers. He didn't really take any losses. He's got a lot of links going across the map. But with a baneling nest of his own on the way, I don't know that Targa can really fight this. Well, I mean, also I think it's two. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Actually, he's gonna win out because the, the, they're both sending our lings over to the other side, and they actually both managed to completely escape because there's notice under the overlord till the very last second, even though they're slow lings. So, oh, well, this queen needs to hide in the middle goes, line. Get those drones. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if I like Targa going for the. Well, actually, he might be able to save his natural, so actually, that's probably okay. I thought maybe he was gonna lose his natural just to get into the mineral line and not oh, wow. work out, but. He actually completely deflected Snoot's lings, which means that Snoot's actually in a fairly poor position. I mean, he'd lose too many I, drones. He didn't lose any drones is what I was going to point out. I didn't want to cut you off there. Now he's got four but, banelings on the way. I mean, as long as he doesn't screw up these banelings and, like, walk them into the queens or something, he should be okay. The thing is, is that, yeah, he didn't lose any drones in that, but his hatch is, you know, as we see, very much so later than Targa's. And Targa knows it's coming. He saw the baneling nest, and he saw the lings, of course, now going across with those overlords. So he's just going to defend and probably win. Uh, it actually depends on how well these banelings connect or if they connect at all. Oh, they connect with the queens. All slow ling bing wars are not something well, you usually see every day. Yeah, I mean, for Snoot, what he really needed to do there was have them, like, if not, like, they're on a timeline. The queens are going to focus them down, of course, but, like, you want, you obviously want to have them try and hit the lings, if anything, but, uh, yeah, really yeah. not the best connection. Now with those spine crawlers coming down here, one from the main, even, Snoot should not really be able to push into this. I mean, yeah. 
It's only three banelings. This can't even take out a spine crawler. Right, he's gonna try and get all the links because. Uh, well, oh, oh, beautiful oh, connects with both of those banelings. <laughs> but yeah, but even yeah, it's killing links. It's not hurting uh, target economically or anything. Well, okay, so the the whole thing is is that Atari did have to defend, right? It wasn't like he was able to drone up completely while that was happening. So the drone cut's actually fairly similar, and in fact, Snoot's gonna actually go above him for a little while right now as Targa, you know, figures out, okay, that that's the end of the aggression, and I'm okay to drone now. So it's it's actually Snoot who's in the lead supply wise and drone wise right now. I think Targa might have actually over defended uh, that second spine crawler. Probably wasn't that necessary, and even like. That first spine crawler didn't seem actually you know, like it did a whole lot. What's odd on top of this is the fact that they are both still using slowlings. It just occurred to me like while I was chasing that banling around, I'm like, wait, neither of these guys has metabolic boost yet either. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that's a good point. And Snoot actually starts his. And does Targa even have the gas for it? No. No, Targa. No, of least... course, he only just recently took his gas. I mean, yeah. he he was focused on get the spine crawlers, get the queens. He had to deal with the banlings. It was. It was like kind of hectic for him, if we're gonna be honest. But. Yeah. Well, now he's like, uh, he's not not great of. A, I mean, he's okay, but obviously, as you look into the game hard overlay, he's down in supply and he's down in drones and the same army value. So he really has nothing. He doesn't have a whole lot going for him except maybe the fact that he is very well defended. So he doesn't really have to worry about making any more uh, lings for the time being. He can just focus on drones. But that's uh, that's about it. And Snoot's actually getting on a Roach Warren. So he might be preparing to do some more aggression, roach, banlings, and finally speedlings. You know, it's kind of unfortunate here too, is Snoot's actually not been getting a lot of scouting information other than what he's been seeing in the natural base, whereas Targus actually been to the main of Snoot not once but twice, and uh, he might not have seen all the tech in the back, but Snoot's kind of revealed what's been going on, you know, through the banling nest, through his uh, little bit of aggression there. Small little of a scrap in the natural base, gonna get cleaned up pretty nicely too, but I mean, for Targa at this point, he has to assume one of two things. One is mutals or roaches. Like, Snoot's not going to stick on links forever. No. <laughs> well, I mean, he, yeah, you're right. So he could go to the mutas and get those links out, which, I mean, is possible. But as we know, Snoot's going to go for that roach more, and he's going to be producing roaches soon. Actually, there was on a third. So he's not looking to do any type of uh, all-in to end the game very quickly. He's actually, he's a mind going in a long game. Of course, that kind of defines Target. Snoot, doesn't it? Dark actually managed to minimize drone losses there despite pulling them. Really like that too. Uh, only two workers mm -hmm. dead from that. Still down by five drones though, and Snoot does go ahead and push out ten roaches. Targa doesn't have a roach warren. Uh, as we've talked about before, a lot of lings can in fact take down a small handful of roaches, but only if they get a full surround first off, and only if it's it's you know a handful, not more than a handful of roaches. Well, He's positioning try actually bust something with these banelings that are morphing right now? I think he's expecting Snoot to have a lot of zerglings. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, he will be sorely wrong. Actually, I think he saw the roaches. <laughs> yeah, nope, 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 nope. He's just trying to handle on seeing it immediately. Uh, but you're right, no, for these lings, they can take on these roaches. I mean, Snoot doesn't have a critical mass of them by any means, and if he gets full surrounds off, those lings will get their job done, but that's going to be very difficult to do. One thing about Ohana, let's not forget, there's lots of areas where you can put your back to the wall with these roaches, especially right outside the natural base. So securing yeah. this third really won't be too problematic. And oh man, I forgot about these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you remember all the mortal sentry all-ins? I remember those rocks were always so yep. important. Oh, that was a good build on this map too. But well, luckily actually, we're not Actually, I like what Targa's done at home. So, for those who don't know, like, Queens or whatever, banelings or whatever, dealing with roaches is a bit of a pain. If you go for five oh. spine crawlers, that'll take on anywhere between 10 and 15 roaches relatively easily. I think Targa right now a little bit scary knowing that his roach one was so far behind himself. He wasn't feeling confident he could actually deal with an attack from Snoot. But as we know, Snoot's actually not gearing up for an attack. He's just taking his 30, securing the map. Yeah, see the problem with that is that we, I mean, it's pretty much a fact that Targa is behind. I mean, maybe not, you know, really, really far behind, but behind. So well, I mean, yeah. by being more defensive and not taking a risk by actually getting that 30, just puts it down. Or by, you know, skimping on the defenses and getting a lot of drones, he's putting himself even farther behind while Snoot is like, okay, I have, you know, more drones and I have more army and I can do whatever the hell I want. It's up to you to actually make a move. And, uh, you know, moving into defensive position usually isn't what gets you ahead. To the credit of Snoot, though, one, or, to, sorry, to the credit of Targa, I meant to say, the longer your opponent waits to attack you when they're ahead like this, the better chances are you're going to catch up at some point in this game. It's there's true. A, there's a lot of times where Roach Wars, they don't happen until both players are maxed, regardless of who started off ahead early on, so... 
I mean, Snoot might look really good right now, guys, but he doesn't have an army big enough to bust through the spine collars, and he certainly can't all in target at the moment. Oh, but no. if he takes a fight in the middle of the map, he'll take that win for sure. I guess Snoot thought he maybe was going for Mutilus, because there are so many Squirt Crawlers down in Snoot's base right now, which, I, like, he was on Lynx for a very long time, so you're probably like, are you going to go for Mutas? And Oof. then, if you are behind in a game, it's it's usually better to do what your opponent's not doing, right? Because if you're behind and you go Roach versus Roach, you're probably going to lose the Roach versus Roach War. But maybe if you get Mutas, you can actually find your way into the game, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I had to snoot down five drones, I believe, and however many murals that is for sport crawlers. It didn't really help out a whole lot. Well, snoot actually, it's worth noting, still hasn't seen the main of Targa. I was trying to show that on the stream while you're talking. So, you're talking about this, like, yo, know, it could be Mutalist. And you're right, it, could, it still could be. Snoot has no way of knowing because of the lack of information. So, the sport crawlers, I wouldn't even call them that much of a waste. But what's weird to consider is this kind of like an equalizing Ooh. force if he didn't have, like, like if he was on the same drones, kind of equalizes out that later third. But because Snoot has so many more drones and he's had so many drones for so long, like, those spore crawlers are nothing. Those are free units to him. Yeah. Uh, oh, a free fourth with these lings. Of course, lings can be useful in later stages of the game. They're not always just completely worthless. Uh, like that. <laughs> actually going ahead and canceling a fourth. But uh, I do believe Snoot actually saw the roaches um, with an overseer. He didn't see the roach worn, but he, he knows it's going to be roach versus roach wars. And it would have been really, really late need this <laughs> to pop out right now, right? So yeah. um, Snoot did go for the infestation pit first off. And oh, actually going up to a very heavy number of drones. A lot of the times, or more often in ZVZ, we see professional Zerg players go around more like 60, or like someone's yeah, not even. But this is Snoot. Snoot and Rhett are like the drone kings. <laughs> this is a liquid thing, right? I th it must be, because I really don't know a lot of other Zerg. I've seen Solar do it once, where I think he went to 80 on three bases, but that was only because he was saving up to make like a ton of spore crawlers. So, uh, yeah, it's like a liquid thing where you just go for a lot of drones, I guess. Uh, now, one small difference here, tactically, guys, Tarka's actually been actively spreading a lot of creep. While this kind of is a bit of a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, because on one hand, you get a lot of control on the map, you get vision, and of course, speed bonuses to reinforce with. Once Snoop gets on the creep, he benefits from all those speed bonuses as well. So really, all he's gaining is vision through these creep tumors. So yeah. it's kind of like, I, this can be really good, but it could also work out for Snoot. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's like it's a personal preference, isn't it? Though, like whether or not you really want that um, that vision in exchange for maybe a faster counterattack, because that would the, the speed would really help out. But nah, I don't know. I guess Targa obviously <laughs> likes having that vision. The upgrades are going to be actually really identical for both players if the fight ever comes down. I'm actually surprised that Snoot hasn't even tried poking. You know, there was times where he was like 30 supply or more ahead, and he didn't even try and poke. Of course, there were a lot of spine crawlers, but but still, like you know, moving your army around the map, but instead he's chosen to go and just tech very far ahead. You know, he got the Infestors a lot sooner, and now he's getting the Hydralisk, uh, or a lot more Hydralisk anyways. Um, but this has given time for Targa. We talked mm. about, you know, the farther the game goes, the, the less the that lead that Snoot has becomes, and that's yeah. exactly what's happening. Now, Snoot's Targa's gonna have got... a bigger bank, though, if the fight goes down, and that's gonna be really important. Yeah, the Roach Cannon's actually evened up, which is quite frankly surprising to say the least. A lot of this can come down to positioning, guys, getting those fungals off, locking your opponent in place. Snoot's got the advantage in Hydralisks at the moment, but again, these spine cars are going to really help make up that difference, especially yeah. in a defensive fight. And uh, let's not forget, too, for Targa, he's got a couple Banelings ready, so if he gets a good fungal or two, you know, roll the Banelings into the Hydralisks, they are light units, they will get destroyed. If, if, right? Because that, there's, there's fungals if. on yeah. the way, too. So they, uh, I don't know about that. But he's going to attack the right side, take down a few spine crawlers. Let's get a Decent few fungal. roaches go ahead and fungled and get uh, yeah. get killed right there. And it's going to be very hard to break into this position because there are so many spine crawlers. I mean, they were made very early on, but now they're going to be very, very useful as the, the game goes on. Hive is actually almost done for Snoot. He's going to have 3 3 much faster than Targa. He's Ooh. looking to have a really good fight now, though, and I don't know about this. He just put himself into a choke. The fungals and of Targa are going to be great. He's fighting on top of the spine crawlers, too. These Hydras have nothing left a buffer for them the glass cannon units are on the front lines and snoot throws away a good chunk of his army ah yeah. mostly due to positioning oh, the oh no oh, he needs like one fungal to stop this counterattack. oh actually he just get away that was close but he's probably gonna lose that fourth uh he has no spine crawlers well, actually he's spine a couple crawlers but yeah it's not a lot it's not it's not the same as targa's wall of spine crawlers no. Uh, Snoot's, he's making a ton of use though, guys. I mean, look at his supplies. He's already remaxed. He's, his injects yeah. just saved his life more than anything else this game. 
Well, he had he was maxed out for a much longer time. Where I mean, Target actually I don't think has been maxed out yet. So he did have a really big bank, but he just used a lot of that big bank in a fight that actually went super poorly for him. Like that was really great for Target to get back into this game. Look what Snoop's making behind the zombie grub. He's making the, the anti ground units. I mean. The problem is, even if you're like uh, on 3-3 three, three range, it's still not easy dealing with Ultralists. Like, you can do kiting, and yes, you can beat them eventually, but it's still not easy. For Snoop to have enough minerals and gas behind us, too, so, well, we'll see if it gets to that point. Lots of fungal growth going down on top of the army of Snoot. We even see some infested Terrans coming out. Lots and lots of Hydras, though, are sh just chipping through these like nothing. It is 2-1-2-1 as far as upgrades go, so dead even on the playing field. But right now, I think Targa is in a bit of trouble. It's going to come down to a lot of these Hydras having no buffer left for them. It looks like the roaches will just oh, with those infested terrans beautifully clean this up. But as we can see, Targa walks away with a very small army. Yeah, that was a better fight for Snoot than that last one, but it did end up, you know, Targa didn't obviously lose that fourth. I think he lost a few drones right there, but uh, it does come back down to that remax potential, and Snoot has a much bigger one. Getting those Ultralisk right now, getting the plating for them, they're not going to be well upgraded because they don't have any attack, but they will soak up a lot of damage. And if he just goes ahead and makes well, Ultralisk Hydro, that would be an interesting composition, but it, it might work. It's their base damage is like 40 or 35 or something, right? Like, even without right. upgrades, in that splash damage scenario, <laughs> they're immune to fungal growth. Well, not the stealth, like the damage, but I mean, they're frenzied units, so they don't get locked in place. They'll be able to just push on through the lines, I feel, and if he... I don't know, I, I think this is going to go well for Snoot. I really... This is a good composition. I'd be interested to see, like, really interested to see if he is going to just kind of skimp on the roaches, because the Ultralisk will be even better, um, you know, fodder for the, uh, protecting the Hydralisk. Uh, you don't usually see this late game scenario in ZVZs that often anymore. Uh, it usually just goes down to Roach, Hydra, and Fester, and that's it with the upgrades. But now we're going to see the Ultras going far, unfortunately, behind the army. Yeah, oh, and now the army too much get, right there. The army gets fungled and keeps Ultras back a little bit later from getting involved with the fight. But as we can see here, guys, they are slowly going down, but that's kind of the key phrase there, slowly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look there at these, that supply. Yeah, good game is going to be called. You just, you can't Ultralisks, man. It's so hard to deal with, but uh, game number one, ladies and gentlemen, will go to Liquid Snoot in this best of seven. Yeah. I mean, he always had that lead. You know, it wasn't necessarily always in the supply as Target did catch up, but the bank was just extreme for him. Targo was starving. Yep.